Senka Caro, and I'm joining you today from Sedona, Arizona in the United States. It's such an incredible project, this 18 hour marathon backflip, triple flip as we go from 2020 into 2021 here online together globally. This technology and this organization is truly incredible to hold the space for this celebration of music and art and ideas and hope uh, as we move from one of the hardest years of all of our lives into something totally new and exciting. So I really want to honor Seeds for the incredible work they're doing. They're pioneers. It's not easy to create new templates for the world, uh, but they're doing it with a community that's coherent, that has a vision, and they're stepping boldly forward and creating that. So it's amazing to see your progress online and it's truly a great project. Tonight, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Renaissance, the coming Renaissance. How do we get there? How do we get from point A to point B? Well, we are well on our way, I have to tell you. Uh, and even though this year has been hard, some major stuff is gonna, is, has happened that's been the silver lining. We're gonna talk about some of that research tonight. So I look at the big picture and I see what's missing and I can tell you we're close to an incredible self-organizing system uh, where we can move from the information age to the wisdom age. We're moving from this centralized to this decentralized to this distributed world and SEEDS is part of that uh, and so are many other pieces um, of technology and ways of organizing ourselves and communities and families that across the world. I believe when I study the whole that there's a couple gaps in our strategy that need to be shored up if we really want to sail. And the things I think that are missing is citizen science, data visualization, and a passion-based economy. And we're going to dive into a couple of these tonight. So. Uh, as you know, we're in the midst of exponential change like we have never experienced before. This is hard for our nervous systems, it's hard for our fear because all of a sudden things are growing and changing like never before and it's, it's, it's a time of great awe and it's a time of great curiosity as well. So in the next 20 years, we're going to ex be experiencing 300 years of progress, right? It's a lot to take in. And it's also kind of a big gap to, to be taught that things were matter and now taught at their frequency, to be understanding that things are limited and now they're unlimited. It's, it's, it's a hard to understand this worldview. And you know we really need to embody it to understand how it works. So we're going through a rapid and extreme uh, situation, but everyday people are here to step in uh, and we can truly be the heroes because I think so many of us understand that there's a lag going on with consciousness at the core of our companies and our schools and our hospitals, everything can change fundamentally. It's the, the, the triple activator that we have in our side pocket, right? So all this change can be good um, because we can leverage it toward these these strategies that we're going to need to get us there. So I want to start with data visualization. So about a year ago, I started the Global Awakening Tracker in March to track the consciousness movement to teach people that, hey guys, we are growing. We are, you know, there's leaders around the world. So we're tracking 700 consciousness leaders in all different fields and tracking their social networks to see how they grow. And the reason we started this was looking at the solar cycles. There's a solar cycle that happens every 11 years. We're in an apathetic period right now, but in three and a half years, we're gonna hit a peak. And if we take those solar cycles and we match them to revolutions and wars and inventions, you can see a pattern here, which means that our nervous system is about to rev up to the max, right? And we want to make sure that we're in balance and in peace and in love for that so that we're not um, <laughs> battling ourselves in, in, in the 2020s, right? So what we're seeing is exponential change, right? So these ideas are spreading. This is not business as usual. I want to talk also um, about citizen science and 
So IONS, Institute of um, Noetic Science, has said that in order to, for people to, to, to shift in their worldview, there needs to be kind of a petri dish of conditions. And you can create those conditions that can walk people through those experiences. So remember when I was saying that there was going to be a silver lining to 2020? Well, it's this, it's that my research as is similar to the research that I, the results that IONS got in a much larger study, which is that traumatic events and injuries are what brings us into awakening, right? It's when everything falls apart, the ball drops, you know, the old patterns, the old way of doing things don't work anymore, right? So we can also have those experiences with books and films and curiosity and yearning, but it's important to know that that was uh, that was an important process for it to happen. So when people have that shift in their worldview, all of a sudden, reading and the joy of it and gratitude helps them continue on that path. And we also know that yoga and meditation help us have that downtime, have that inner introspection to start moving the puzzle pieces as we recalibrate our worldview. And we know that the obstacles to this to consciousness shift is, is feeling alone, right? Not being able to talk about this stuff. Well, welcome to your community. Seeds is offering this to us right now, right? You're not alone, right? <laughs> you can talk about this um, and we're, we're gonna do this together. So the old search engines are not working anymore. We need something that helps us be decentralized to be more complex. We're not in duality. Our brains can think US is capitalism, you know, Russia's communism, but it's much more complex than that. So data visualization can help us really see the nuances. You know, there's not just five pills that can help you with depression and addiction, right? It's a whole slew of things that citizen science can help show us, whether it's tapping or transcendental meditation. How much do things cost? How much, what's working for who, right? So citizen science is moving from crowdsourcing where a single scientist is asking people to take soil samples to something that we can really research in our lives. And this post-taboo kind of research buffet where a lot of this stuff, at least the stuff I'm interested in, you know, was too taboo for, for people to get tenure researching um, or to get funded. But citizens are, are a bit unique in this. So we can start looking at rice experience, <laughs> experiments by Dr. Emoto or spoon bending. It's been really fun experimenting those in the last couple of years because talk about an experience that you can't, that breaks your brain and you say, well, if this is possible, what else is possible, right? So these are incredible experiences and Dispenza and Lynn McTaggart and Lipton are inviting all of us into their worlds um, and really making a break from traditional science to explore. So again, wouldn't it be cool if we could come together and learn about our extra senses and build virtual worlds to help share our excitement about what's new? I have built and launched in the last couple weeks a citizen science project on trying to understand extra dimensions and extraterrestrials. It's called exometaverse.org and it asks us, how have you made contact, right? And we know from 5,000 responses that people make contact with meditation and in dreams and in the physical. So we're organizing a way to show people resources, how to have that first experience, right? And we know from the numbers again that this is a repressed curiosity and it's about to come out in the world. We're also sharing people's decentralized experiences of what their contact was like because as disclosure happens, we may see that the news might make this a scary thing like the war on drugs, the war on terror, when really as we change to a new narrative, we want to make sure that we pull everything into this um, this new loving unified worldview that's not a big soap opera <laughs> like the world we live in now right so so this is a new octave in the narrative and we're organizing the people that are creating and researching and exploring these new dimensions now the final piece that i'm going to leave you with is this idea that we really just like seeds we've got to fix 
the economy part of it because we all know incredible consciousness creators that can't do what they love they can't be in their passion they can't be in their joy because they got to pay the rent right so how do we do that the passion-based economy is a hack um, it sidesteps money using instead of asking sort of um, wealthy connected people for money and ask them for their connections right so it's an abundance energy for passion projects but the trick is is that it's designed by individuals so we know from human-centered design that individuals are the best people to design our future because if it's all tapped down it doesn't really work in the end so this project takes individuals with incredible ideas that have never been tested they they come together and they put together a budget and a dream team of people that are connected to that bu of that budget. If they need shipping containers, they find someone in the shipping industry. If they need software, they find someone in software. And they have 40 days to take that budget and knock it down as much as possible before doing some untraditional fundraising for the final part. And we're using clairvoyance and crypto and crowdfunding and all sorts of crazy um, ideas to, to finalize the gap. There's prizes as the creators finish their projects, report what worked, what didn't work. Then they can go on and create impact businesses or open source templates. And we've got a couple projects in the system, a huge community center to solve for loneliness. Um, it's off grid, it's made from containers, it's solar, it's incredible. <laughs> and also a project called Alive, which is putting a ban on the purchase of dead artists with collectors and asking them to support artists. An artist that we have in um, Argentina, Marikita, she can pay two murals, fund her entire life for $6,000 a year because she lives in Argentina. So this is an incredible relationship that a collector gets to have. They get to pick uh, for artwork um, uh, of, of their choice throughout every season. And it's a fun project we hope to spread to other artists that are probably here tonight. And the last project we're working on is a hydroponic food garden for food banks in Argentina. Again, with a similar budget, but it's we already have um, space for 400 plants built into a full system that's working. So again, if we can create these hacks, these scaffoldings, these ways of doing things, that other can join in and copy and do the same, we're gonna be well on the way of creating a renaissance. We're gonna be running around with the chickens, but we can be one beautiful, elegant humanity, right? Where we're sharing all of our wisdom um, with each other in a way uh, that helps us uh, embody the renaissance that we're here to live, right? So this right now, this flip between 20 and 21, this is liftoff. Namaste to everybody. Enjoy this celebration. Uh, we deserve it.